In Uttar Pradesh, India, Shyam Kali held fast to her fervent wish that her six daughters would be able to defy the generational cycle of malnutrition and stunting, as well as the pervasive gender discrimination against girls and women. When we return to India to revisit the moms and children in the first 1000 Days book, we found Shyam Kali at school, not as a student, but as a janitor sweeping the grounds earning the equivalent of just a little bit over one dollar a day. She and her girls had survived the coronavirus pandemic, but they were hardly thriving. Her oldest daughter got married and moved away. The next two oldest were working in the rice and wheat fields of others to bring a bit of food and income into the family. The youngest girls were in elementary school, where learning had been greatly disrupted by the pandemic. All of my girls are as healthy as can be, Shyam Kali says. While she struggled to beat the odds of malnutrition and stunting that afflict so many children in India, her greatest struggle was against the lowly status of girls and women, and her community's pressure that she give birth to a son. All her children were conceived to be boys. As each girl was born, their father, Rajender, was determined to keep trying for a boy. The first words Shyam Kali heard after Anshika was born, words from the midwife were, I'm sorry, this mother now has five daughters. After a sixth daughter was born, Shyam Kali was determined that it be the last child, for the family was falling deeper and deeper into poverty, and she herself was growing ever weaker. As they grew, the girls took on their mother's determination. The girls grew up independent-minded, empowered in their family. The other families also all survived the pandemic. The moms praised the nutrition lessons they received from the Community Empowerment Lab for helping their children get off to a better start in life. Lessons such as to begin breastfeeding immediately after birth and to forsake the tradition that has women and girls eating last, and in many cases least, during family meals. As smallholder farmers, they also worked to diversify and grow more nutritious crops, even during periods of heat and drought. Sisters-in-law Seema and Sanju watched their children grow and grow. Neighbors Shushma and Mohana also admired the development of their children. but when deeply ingrained inequality continued to compromise any nutritional gains. Through the years, the pressure on Shyam Kali from society and from her husband for having only girls intensified. Eventually, her husband, feeling cursed, left the family. Shyam Kali was all alone with her girls. Though she had little formal education herself, Shyam Kali was determined her daughters continue in school. She sold her silver ankle bracelet to pay for the high school entrance exams for her two oldest daughters. But because their learning had been so disrupted by the pandemic, they both failed. Sashi, the second oldest, wants another chance at school. She is working in the fields until she can afford another exam. She wants to be a role model for her sisters. She has learned this persistence and perseverance from her mother. God wanted me to have girls, Shyam Kali says. I won't abandon them. <laughs>